Yo there guys, what is happening? Welcome back to another video here on National Vlogs. Now today, uh, I'm going to be reviewing uh, the first of the two upcharge mazes that were at Four Part Fight Nights in 2020. Uh, obviously, one of them being Roots of Evil, which replaced Blair Witch, but the one we're going to be reviewing today is currently, in my opinion, the second longest running outdoor maze at Fort Park. Um, it is very close to beating Blair Witch's run. Of course, what is the maze we're reviewing? As you saw in the title, it Platform 15. I'm going to be giving my review of Platform 15 in its 2020 version. Obviously, there will be spoilers uh, going ahead. Obviously, I did do this on the last day. Um, so a bit of history about Platform 15. Uh, Platform 15 opened in 2016. Uh, between 2016 and 2019, uh, the Platform 15 route remained the same, where you'd start off at the old Canada Creek Railway Station, follow the path down, and you'd exit next to Samurai. In 2020, due to the coronavirus uh, pandemic, the, revoke, uh, the route was reversed, and you'd now enter uh, next to Samurai, with the finale now using the timber tugboat queue line, and you'd exit into the Creek Freaks Unchained Scare Zone. So, like I say, there's going to be spoilers going through. Um, obviously, Platform 15 this year was £10 up charge, or £9 of annual pass discount. Obviously, uh, towards the end of my review, I will tell you guys whether it was worth the £10. Um, but yeah, let's kick uh, straight in. So we'll start off at the new entrance, which is obviously on your screen. Uh, theming wise, at the entrance, it's brilliant. Like, I was not expecting this sort of um, <laughs> entrance, really. Uh, those who have done Platform 15 in previous years, you, you'll remember uh, what the exit used to look like. That will be on your screen now. So yeah, that's what the platform fifteen used to uh, the platform fifteen exit used to look like. It used to look like really sort of abandoned, and it looked like you weren't really supposed to be there. So it was really weird going uh, transitioning from that sort of facade to this facade. Let me know which facade you like. Did you like the old facade where the exit was, or do you prefer this one? Personally, I prefer this one really sets up the atmosphere. Um, so what's different this year, obviously with it being reversed, you're actually going in where the exit was and you're queuing up in the old pitch black tunnel or those who have done platform before, you may notice there used to be a sign uh, which were, said tunnel number five, which was actually an old prop from uh, the My Bloody Valentine maze, which is what platform 15 replaced when it came to the park in 2016. So this year, like I said, you queue in the old finale tunnel, which is 100 metres long. This, considering it's an upcharge maze, when I, the two run-throughs I had, we didn't, I didn't really queue that long in the tunnel. On the first run-through, I think I queued in the tunnel for about five, five to ten minutes, I think it was. So um, it wasn't very a long queue but the second one I think we were waiting 15 20 minutes and trust me waiting in that tunnel for 15 20 minutes with the audio and the safety brief from playing it got a little bit aggravating the first I hate that I have to say this there's a bit of a negative thing about queuing in the tunnel social distancing was not clear and no one was social distancing um, and I'm not going to lie, you, you had to wear face masks throughout the maze. Uh, people were wearing face masks during the maze, but a lot of people in like the queue line weren't wearing face coverings, which uh, really quite annoyed me. Uh, there was a point in the queue where there was like a group literally like 0.5 metres behind me, and I genuinely had to keep telling them to uh, move back a bit. Um, so the fact that I'm starting this review in a negative sort of way just sort of shows that I think 
thought but didn't quite think out. Obviously, as you can see on the tunnel wall, there are X's where people are told to stand, but no one did. I feel like maybe they should have put some temporary markers on the floor, maybe. Uh, the audio that was playing in the tunnel, I quite enjoyed that. Uh, you know, it was a mix of a safety briefing as well as sort of giving you the backstory to the maze which I found quite interesting. I feel like that made the story a bit clearer. Uh, and I think it was a money saving tactic of having tour guides take you through, in my opinion. So after you queue in the tunnel, obviously, uh, just like with Roots of Evil, you are sent through in your households. So on my run throughs, I got sent through on my own. So that was interesting, doing platform 15 on my own. That's the first time I've done platform 15 on my own since 2017. I think the weird thing also with queuing in the tunnel was you, those who have done platform in the past, you're so used to walking through the tunnel and not being able to see anything. And the fact that you're walking through the tunnel and you can actually see everything, it was weird. It was extremely weird. Uh, so you, you go in and you go into the old ticket office uh, from 2019's finale which is actually right at the start where normally you'd go through like, it's all, it used to be like a mini tent into the tunnel. Um, I liked this scene last year and um, I got a good little jump scare because the actors would hide behind the wall around the side and an actor would jump out and it was quite good. And then you'd be taken on your very short pre-show and you'd walk down the path towards the crawl section to go into the village. Uh, you'd get told a little bit of a story that um, the tour has changed this year because uh, tour guides believe that the village holds the answers to all the questions. Um, this little pre-show goes on for less than 30 seconds. It is a really short pre-show and, and I think it sort of helps with the audio being played through the tunnel as well. Then your tour guide leaves you and you go through the little crawl section uh, which then transitions up into Creek Village. Uh, there was loads of new little bits of theming elements, as you can see, like uh, the railroad crossing, station five miles. Um, and then you head into the village. My, my first, my next negative point about um, the village, and I know this may sound like really dickish of me, but there was a lack of actors in there. Obviously, I know due to social distancing, they had to space them out, but in those little backstreet corridors, on one of my run-throughs, I had an actor stood at one of the houses, and then on the other run-through, I had no actors until the house. Um, but yeah, it was great going through Creek Village again. Uh, at night, the lighting was a lot darker and a lot more intense. And I think also, I think it was a lot more intense because I went through on my own and it was, like I said, quite an intense sort of experience not knowing when an actor is going to come out. Um, and then you head into the house, the theming in the village and the house is pretty much the same. Um, before in the house, you used to have about three or four actors. This one, there was one, well, one actor. Uh, on one of the run through, the actor gave, didn't even care about the role. He just stood there and did nothing. So, a um, bit annoying. Then you come out the house and you start walking up towards the train. Uh, first thing, you go past uh, a hut, uh, and this hut is actually from Amity Beach, uh, previously used in Love Island Lakes that you could use to hire out. Uh, some people said they used. There was an actor in there. I got no actors in this bit. So on both my run throughs, I had no actors there and it just felt like, why is it there? You then go over the bridge. Uh, once again, someone told me there'd be an actor on the bridge. Wasn't an actor on the bridge. However, there were two bodies uh, floating in the lake. I found that quite creepy, especially at night. Uh, no, there was one actor on that bridge at night. Uh, and she started saying, uh, there's a space in the lake, would you like to join them? And it was funny. It was quite funny. Um, and then after that, you go around and you head to the train. Now, 
obviously this year the train sort of is in the same sort of spot, but the actual locomotive has been tipped onto its side. The lighting's the same, the audio's the same. It feels like there was a lot less smoke in that area and it was more atmospheric lighting this year. Um, in this section in previous years, there's been like two actors. When I went through, there was about three actors in this section. Um, and I quite enjoyed that. The actors were quite good. Uh, they were kicking the fences and it was, uh, I got some really good scares. I did get chased down there at one point. And when I was getting chased, the fire effects in the, on the actual train went off. Uh, previously, the fire effects were in the funnel of the train. This time they were actually sort of behind where the wheels were. So it was weird, but they went off at such a good time. And the light on the, uh, the headlamp on the train went off as well afterwards. So it would sort of light up the path and it would light up the path. Even past the s bend section, it would light up a lot of the path. And then you go through the s bend section and you go up the previously the long path uh, going towards the platform. In this section, there were about six actors. So um, obviously there were some actors in the hut. They didn't jump out. They were sort of like wandering around. Um, on my second run through, I, I had this whole second half ruined because um, show captain came in and a load of the actors broke character and it ruined the whole sort of atmosphere. And at that point I was just like, you know what? I just want to get out of this maze. I, I hate this now. Um, some of the sleepers this year had sticks. Um, interestingly, the audio from previous years along that route stayed the same. I'm surprised they didn't change the audio. I would have loved to hear the 2016 audio playing again, um, which is actually currently, which is played in the dockyard. As you go along this path, there's like these, as you can see, like tour tracks. Um, I didn't see all of them, mainly because uh, social distancing again. Uh, they were sending in groups way too uh, much, and I think that's why I saw most of this review is mostly negative, because uh, we worked out they were sending a group in about every 20 to 45 seconds. So there was like, for the village bit, I'd be on my own. And then by the time I got past the train and going up that final bit, there was like four groups in front about five groups coming behind me. At one point, a group sort of pushed past me without social distancing, and I, I felt like they didn't think this maze properly through. Um, also, as you go along, you see like uh, the platform ahead and the platform still ahead, sheds uh, and the railroad crossing the sta uh, station one mile ahead. I found these quite good. Like, don't get me wrong, a lot of the actors were really good in here. Um, shout out to Michael. Like, the whole cast in there were really doing their all for the final night. And I got some good scares in there. And then, of course, you go past uh, the big thank you for visiting. We hope you enjoyed the tour sign. And you head up onto the old platform where you would start your tour. On the first run through, all the groups were not getting split up. We were all just going straight into the ending. And there was no social distancing. I think at one point I stood to the side and let about three groups through. Um, yeah. Uh, the theming up on that end has pretty much stayed the same. Uh, there's now like a flashing light on the old ticket office bit. And the old big Platform 15 sign, which previously used to be on that station platform, if you remember in its first years, it was facing towards um, the Creek Wood Sawmill. And then, then they rotated it uh, facing up towards Timber Tugboat. This year is actually now uh, placed on the side of the ticket office, but at night you can't see it. So it's weird. Maybe they should have put some light on it, I don't know. Then you go into this new sort of tunnel structure uh, which is, looks really temporary and also a bit permanent as well. Um, quite, I think a lot of that was there from Dead Creek Woods. You go down and, you know, you're walking down this little tunnel bit. Way too lit up in there. I think they should have made that a pitch black tunnel. Um, 
And then halfway down, there's like a loud vibration sign, uh, well, noise, which you could hear from halfway down the path. So it sort of ruined it. And you went into the finale where there was smoke, uh, strobe lights, and about four or five actors. Like this was brilliant. We didn't see the conductor whatsoever. I saw, no, we saw the conductor on the last run through, but on the first one, the conductor weren't there. Um, to be honest, I do prefer the old tunnel ending, but this one was pretty good. And you did have like a prop train in the tunnel at the back, which I thought was quite good. And then you exited into the Timotopo queue line and you'd exit into Creek Freak's uh, Unchained Scare Zone. So that's the main part of the review. So the next question that I need to answer is, was Platform 15 worth the £10 upcharge? I'm gonna be frank, no, it was not worth £10. How much do I think it was worth? To be frank, £5 maximum. I don't think it was worth £10, to be honest. Um, you know what, like, the platform this year, it slightly disappointed me. You know, I think it had potential this year, and I, I just feel like, because social distancing weren't being kept to, and the experiences I had in there, no fault to the actors, I feel like operations let Platform 15 down this year. Um, if you watch my top 10 Scare Maze video this year, you'll know that Platform 15 is toward the bottom of the list. Last year it was number four, this year it's, um, Number nine, it it really wasn't amazing this year. It nearly didn't even make it into the top ten. So um, yeah, it's a shame. Uh, the fact that this was five pounds extra than Creepy Caves, and I feel like this had less scares than Creepy Caves, and it was mad. All right. Uh, what would I like to see happen in twenty twenty one? To be honest, even though my head says. I think it should come back. If I'm honest, next year, I think Platform 15 needs to go. I think it's run its course now. Um, honestly, I think Platform needs to go now, to be honest. I, I, all I'm gonna say, I think it's time for, for the Sleeper Express's journey to terminate. Platf like I say, Platform 15's run its course, and I think it's time for something new in that area. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts. Did you do Platform 15? Do you think it was worth £10? Did you have a better experience than me? Like I say, honestly, I think it's time for Platform to leave the park and to be replaced with something else. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. I've been Nasha. This has been another video on Nasha Vlogs. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.